All right, welcome back, boys and girls. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for the views and the subscriptions. And welcome back to Learn React in 2020. Now, in this video, um, we are going to talk about how to create the reactive background um, in, in the weather card. But before I start doing that, I just want to tell you a couple of things that I've decided. One is I'm going to make sure that the video is not as long as the last video. It's like 50 minutes, and that's way too long. And second thing is, just forget about me being in the picture. It's all right. I think it's distracting and it's not very useful. So yeah, just the code and the presentation and my voice will do for now. So let me just recap what we are trying to do in this video. And that is, do you know, if you look at these weather cards, every weather card has a different gradient based on the temperature it's displaying. So because uh, Perth is 26 degrees Celsius, so it has this kind of hue of hot and Sydney is only 21 so it has different gradient if I search for a very hot place usually very hot Kuala Lumpur this is probably gonna be 30 plus yeah if it's 30 degrees you see it's the the, the temperature behind there is even more darker shade of uh, of red or maybe like the temperature the, the gradient is very reddish kind of thing same thing here if I search for Calgary, Calgary in Canada is usually by the negative nowadays. Yep. So it's because it's a negative degree, then the color is also like more lighter in the blue and so on. So this is what we're going to be talking about in this video. All right, let's get started. So let's talk about the color logic and how we're going to implement the logic first. So we need to kind of formulate our formulas and the logic we want to implement first before we go ahead and code that into React. So first of all, we need to make some totally, totally arbitrary decisions. And these decisions I've made for myself. And you guys can make different assumptions if you wish, but this is what I'm using right now. And I'm just trying to oversimplify things. So I just decided that hot weather is going to be any weather from 12 degrees to 40 degrees. And I decided that cold weather is going to be any weather from negative 20 degrees to 12 degrees. That means any temperature between negative 20 and 40 belongs to one either one of the groups. So it's either hot weather between 12 to 40 or either cold weather between negative 20 and 12. Now for this, for the hot weather, I am going to give it different hues of red. So like you show, like you saw just now, um, if it's really, really hot, then it's a very, very reddish gradient. If it's not that hot, then it becomes um, a less reddish gradient. Same thing with the cold weather, it's different hues of blue. So the colder it is, the brighter the blue it is. Okay, so how do we approach this problem and how do we think about the logic behind it? So we need to code color changes based on these values. So these are the values that we have decided and we need to figure out a logical formula in which we give it a temperature, it will give us different uh, shades of red or different shades of blue. And for this, I want to make things very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate one factor of the RGB. So we're going to be using RGB code to figure out different colors. So that's red, green, blue. And you know that the value for each of these goes up from 0 to 255. So to simplify things, I'm going to eliminate one factor of the RGB and fix the other one. And then take that temperature variable that we get from the API and we will put it in um, a formula that will give me the result of the last variable. This might sound complicated, but this is basically the overview of what we're going to do in this video. So let's just start very slowly with talking about the hot color logic. All right. So we know, just like I said just now, that the hot color is going to change based on the temperature of different shades of red. So I have RGB. All right. So RGB is red, green, and blue. So what, I'm what I am going to do is I am going to get the red to be always the full red. So it's 255. And then I'm also going to eliminate the blue totally because I don't want any blue in this because simply it's hot weather. We already defined it as hot weather. Now I am going to influence that 255 red using the green value. So I need a variable here that will change how red this red is. Now to make this a bit more uh, visual, if you look at here, color picker in Google, if you give RGB value of 255.00, 0, that is the most red color that you can get. This is pure red, right? Now, if you change this to 255.255, 255, 
zero, that is full red and full green, and zero blue, so in our oversimplified model, this is the least red color that you can get. Okay, now the colors are not going to be the most red or the least red because we said that the most red happens at the highest degree possible, which is 40 degrees Celsius, which is this, right? And the least red is going to happen at the lowest hot degree possible, which is 12 degrees Celsius. Oh, sorry, which is 12 degrees Celsius, which is going to become this. Okay, so using this mental model, I can start to formulate my equations. Let me just wrap this again. I have 100% red color, okay? 255, zero, zero. Now, this red color is going to be less red the lower the temperature is. So the least temperature that I will consider, which is 12 degrees Celsius, should result into the least red color, which is 255, 255, zero. And the most, the hottest temperature, which is going to be 40, should result in the most red color, which is 255, 0, and 0. Now let's look at how we're going to formulate, take that logic that I just explained and try to put it down into, into basic equations. So now I know that my temperature range is between 12 degrees to 40 degrees. So it's between 12 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. All right. I also know that my green or the variable that I need to output is going to be between 255 corresponding to 12, like I explained just now, the least thread, because this is going to be 255, 255, and 0. And if the temperature is 40, then the variable here has to be 0, because that would be the most thread color, which is 255, 0, 0. Now, my temperature is going to be somewhere between 12 and 40, right? So now I have a temperature in between these two numbers and I need to get how much is that going to respond to that variable. Now this will take a little bit of visual thinking, but you can imagine that the range of the temperature is between 12 to 40. So this is the maximum range of my temperature, right? And my temperature, let's just say it's T equal 15. So my temperature is somewhere here. So it's kind of like middle range or maybe somewhere along the line of that big range. Now I want to calculate how much, what's the percentage of the 15 degrees Celsius along that range. To be able to do that, I need to calculate a ratio. So you can imagine me dividing this green strip over this blue strip. To be able to do that, I will just basically get the length of the green strip, which is 15 minus 12, over the length of the blue strip, which is 40 minus 12. This will give me a, a ratio. So the ratio here will be T minus 12, whatever it is, and 40 over 40 minus 12. So again, the length of this strip over the length of this strip. That will give me a ratio, okay? Now, it's very tempting to take that ratio and simply just multiply it by the maximum, which is going to be 255, and thinking that that will result in our variable. That is theoretically correct, but it's not correct here simply because T and G are not uh, directly proportional, they are inversely proportional. Never mind the mathematical jargon, but it, let's just give it a shot, you know? So if I say that the temperature is 40, and always, always, when you're trying to formulate mathematical uh, equations, try to consider the maximum values because they show the most contrast. So in this ratio, let's just say that if T is 40, then what happens? If T is 40, then the ratio would be 40 minus 12 over 40 minus 12, which is 28. So it becomes uh, 28 over 28, which is equal to 1. Now again, like I said, the most um, intuition says that we multiply this by the maximum, which is 255. If you do that, then your variable will be ratio times 255 equals 255. So that means that a T of 40 is going to respond to 255 which is not what we want. To prove this point even further, let's consider a t equal 12. Now, if t equal 12, my ratio would be 12 minus 12 over 28 is going to become 0. You take that 0 and you multiply it by 255, and then that will also become 0. Now, you can see now in this equations that we just formulated, if t equal 12, the variable is 0, and if t equal 40, then the variable becomes 255. And this is absolutely the other way around. I want it to be the other way around. I want when 2 equal 12, the variable should be 255. 
and when t equal 40 the variable should be zero now in order to do this again this is the same assumptions from before what we're going to do is instead of using the ratio we can use one minus the ratio so instead of dividing the ratio over 40 times 255 we can divide one minus ratio over the over the um, the, um, the range times 255 let's check this out so the ratio now is going to be one minus this ratio which is 2 minus 12 over 40 minus 12. Now let's assume that t equals 40, and then I'll become the ratio will become 0, which is 1 minus 1 equals 0. So the variable now will become 0. So if it's 40, it cor corresponds to 0. And the same thing will happen if t equals 12. Uh, then becomes 1 minus 0 equals 1. So the ratio will become 255. So in this formulation, in which the in which the equation is 1 minus the ratio times 255 to equal the variable now i get the correct correlation if i have t equal 40 i get 0 and if i have t equal 12 i get a 255 okay i am really hoping that you guys can follow through this um, so yeah this is basically the logic behind it now let's get back to vs code and code this before my time run out for this video and it becomes way way too long so to do that let's just jump into vs code okay this is what i've done from the last time and to just uh, i think okay so i have this running here i believe yeah so this is what we have now and this is what i've done from the last video you just see a temperature here uh, sorry a gradient at the background there and if i change this to 200 and save it will refresh and then you can see temperatures there are changing as well now Again, what we're going to do is extremely simple. I am simply just going to uh, hard code this logic that we thought about just now. In order to do that, we are... Yes, this version. In order to do that, we are simply going to say um, let temperature equals 12. No, let's just say let's let temp equal 30. So I have a variable called temperature equal 30 beautiful and then i will say let's high color high color remember this is a gradient so i'm gonna have to generate two colors now let high color equals this is the formulation that we just talked about just now so what is this going to be is going to be one minus another bracket which is going to be temp minus 12 and uh, oh, sorry one minus the ratio Yep, so this is going to be temp minus 12, and this is uh, divided by 28, which is 40 minus um, 12. And then you multiply the result here times 255. Beautiful. So what we get here again is this. The high color is going to be 1 minus the ratio, which is temp minus 12 over 28. So 1 minus the ratio is times 255. Beautiful. So this is going to be my high color. And then let's just do a low color as well. Low color equals, for this, just like this again, one more simple assumption is 150. Um, low color equal high color minus 150. Beautiful. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this from to bottom to top because this is the background here. We have a linear gradient. And like I said just now, there's no need for that A. And like I said just now, this is the hot weather. So it's going to be 255. And then here we will have our high color. And the blue is going to be zero. Okay, beautiful. And this is going to change to, this is going to change to, again, RGB of 255. Now this is going to be low color. And the last is another zero. Okay, beautiful. This broke for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Um, ah, yes, because this should be a comma, not a dot. Beautiful, that's it. So if I change this to 20 now, you can see that the, the, the gradient is changing. If I change this to 12, the gradient is changing. If I change this to 25, the gradient is changing. If I change this to 40, this is going to be the most thread ever. If I change this to 35, if I change this to 14, beautiful, that's it. So this is how to code in the logic of changing the background color based on the temperature now i need to include that temperature as a prop of the props that weather card is going to accept 
To be able to do that is extremely, extremely simple. What I'm going to do is I am already passing props to other cards, so it's expecting to have props. So instead of using the temperature here, I'm going to select both. Uh, actually, yeah, we only have it once. I'm going to select this and replace this with props.temp. That's it. That's all there is to it. Props.temp. Now, if I go to... If I go to... Okay, let me just expand this. If I go to app here, I can add to this temp equals... Oopsie. Temp equals... Uh, let's just say 30 once. Okay. Do, do, do. And let me copy this and give it another one at 20. Okay, let me see how that looks like. And that's it. So I can change this to 10 here. And I have two different cards and each of them is rendering at different temperatures. At different looks because of the temperature that we are passing to them. Another card and so on. Let me just uh, try to give it a little bit of change. So let's just do this 40. And this 10 is not going to work, sorry, it's not in the range, so this is 15, and this is 28. Yes, so you can see all the three cards are different. So now that we have uh, changed the way the card renders the temperature, the gradient, we can use the variable temp that we have used in our formulation, and take that as part of the props. So instead of using temp, we just use props.temp. And whenever we render that... Um, that component we ha we can decide what is the temp going to be and based on that temperature you can see that this is uh, reacting to the temperature value that you give it and it's rendering different gradients and this is how you achieve uh, what i showed you before which is how you can see different colors based on for each city you can see gives it a different flavors i'm trying to get yeah, for different cities you get different flavors like i said Okay, that's it. That's it for this video. I'm trying not to make it as too long. In the next video, we'll talk about how to code the same thing for the cold weather. I'll see you guys in the next one. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike this video if you dislike it. And enjoy your learning.